So if I want to open up the green flashlight activity, I want to come here and create one. So I'm going to go to the flashlight uh, package, create a new class. I'm going to call it green flashlight activity. I'm going to, in the super class area, say activity. And I can hit control space in here and uh, get some completion and choose Android activity. Now when I say finish, that will be generated for me, and it won't have any of that boilerplate code, but that's fine. We can fix that. Now I'm going to go down to the layout and create a new file, which will be called green.xml instead of main. And I'm going to shock and horror copy and paste everything from here, from the main uh, XML into the green XML, and then just change a few things. So I want it to be laid out basically the same, except for the background I want to be a green color instead of red. For the label, I want that to be the green text, which we've luckily already got in strings, and I want the button on there to be labeled red, which we've also got in strings, and I want the ID to be red button. So hopefully everybody's keeping up with this. Um, now when I save it, there's one error because I don't have a green color defined, so I'm going to copy this, this guy and call this green and slip this uh, FF from uh, red into the green position. Now that should be fully green. And now if I look at the green layout, I will have a green background. I could probably change the, the change that label, but I'm not going to mess with that right now. Now we have enough to, inside the green flashlight activity, I'm going to use an Eclipse shortcut, which is uh, under the source menu, override or implement methods. This is going to make it easy for me to, to add in a method that I want to override from the superclass. And that happens to be a method um, called onCreate, which we've already seen inside the red activity. So I can come here and click this off in the override or implement method um, dialog, and that will be generated for me, which is nice of Eclipse. Saves me some typing. And I want to set the content view on this green flashlight activity to r.layout.green layout. And now when I once I get to the point of showing this green activity, when it gets created, it's going to show that, that green layout that we just created. Now to actually get to that point inside the red flashlight activity, I am going to use an intent. So I'm going to define an intent here. I, I hit the uh, control space that will um, import it. I'm just going to call it intent. And I'm going to create a new intent. Lovely Java boilerplate way of doing things. Red tape. Um, so Okay, so the type of intent that we're going to look at today um, is constructed in the following format. First of all, I have to pass in a context, which an activity is a context. Um, all you need to know is that it extends context somewhere up the line, and I need to pass the name of the activity that, or the, I'm sorry, the class of the activity that I want to go to. So this is a specific way of constructing an intent that navigates from one context to another intent. Um, because I am in this um, anonymous class, to get access to the context um, red flash activity um, instance of this, I have to prefix it with the class name, which is just kind of a, another bit of Java boilerplate there. But then, because I'm going from this context to the green flashlight activity, I give it the class of green flashlight activity dot class, and that tells it that I want this intent to navigate from the current context to this activity. And then to make that go, I just need to say um, start activity pass in that intent, and now that should work. So let me compile that or and deploy that to our activity. Or I'm sorry, our, uh, our this guy. What's this guy called? Emulator. emulator. That's right. Somebody else said simulator. Apple calls it simulator, and Android calls it an emulator. And I always interchange them, and I don't know why they're called different things. So um, wait for it. Are we ready to click the green button? I'm going to click it. Oh no, there's an error. And I was expecting that. So let me show you the other thing that you need to keep in mind every time when you see this error or when you're creating an, an activity. 
um, Android only knows about activities that you define inside of the manifest. So I'm going to go open up the manifest. I do this. I do this so many times. I wanted to make sure that we all see it. <laughs> inside of the application tag, we already have an activity for the red flashlight activity, but Android doesn't know anything about the green flashlight activity. So I'm going to copy paste this guy down here. Tab him over and make sure that Android knows that we are expecting a green flashlight activity to be um, included in our application. And this label is going to be the title, by the way. So, uh, and it closed this guy. Um, so this label is going to be the title. We'll just leave this uh, to the app name, which is just fine. Now when I run this, and the activity starts, I press green, and I get the green activity with no errors. So one more thing, and we will be done with the code, and then we can ask questions. Um, I'm just going to copy paste this guy too, because I want to do the same thing here. Basically, whenever I click the red button inside the green activity, I call this. So I, if I save this file, um, it's going to be confused about a few things, but that's fine. Uh, I'm going to cut this code out. And here's another little Eclipse secret. You can uh, click, I don't want it to be green button, I want it to be red button. So I can click this and say, or right click it and say refactor, and you can see the, sh the shortcut keys for your particular operating system here. I'm going to say refactor, rename, and now when I type in red button, it will very helpfully change all of the uh, instances of that variable to the, to the name that I want it to be, which is good. And this is no longer going to point out green button, it's going to point out red button. And now we have a click listener that's defined that's going to handle the click on the green screen. But in this case, we don't want to fire an intent, in, at least for our particular case. We want to instead finish the current intent. So we call the finish method, which is on the activity. And that will, com that will stop this intent. Just like, think of it like a deck of cards. I have an intent. Uh, that opens up from one activity to another. That activity is laying. That activity's view is sort of sitting on top of this this uh, theoretical stack of activities. And when I finish this activity, we'll go back to the last one in the stack. Just sort of like your browser history. There's also more complex things you can do there. But for right now, for our purposes, we're just going to finish this activity, which will go back to the red activity. So if I run this fella in our emulator. So about this emulator too, there's another important point that I can make. Um, an emulator is not a device. You always want to test. I mean, it's very convenient to have everything in one place. Some people have noted that it's slower. Man, this is really taking a long time. I don't know if this is going to make any. Launch canceled. Device not found. That's great. I think it lost it lost the connection to the emulator. Sometimes this happens. That's really irritating. <laughs> Basically, I have to close it. Did someone? T I think someone might have said this in the background. If I close the emulator, start it again, it's going to launch. It's going to take a long time too. Anyway, let's. Oh, great. Erkan suggests that you run a clean on that. <laughs> a clean? Maybe. Clean. I don't know if that will make it connect up with the emulator though, because it's it's connecting over, you know, local socket. Um, as you can see, I started up an older version of the emulator here, uh, which should still run our code just fine. Anyhow, well, this starts. Keep in mind, emulator is not a device. You owe it to yourself and your users to test your application on an actual device before you deploy it to the store, every time you deploy it to the store, because there are there may be subtle differences, and I can't tell you what those are right now because there's not supposed to be differences um, but there may be subtle differences in the execution. You just need to make sure that that's not the case. And in any case, even if there's not some weirdness in the execution, you need to feel what it's like to use it on a device as well. Um, because your emulator, you can do things like uh, limit the bandwidth speed, so simulate an edge connection instead of a 3G, but you can't simulate um, how slow it runs. And it's going to run with the full power of your local processor, so you, you need to feel what your device is going to be like Chug, or what, what the experience for your user is going to be like chugging on on, an, on a device and not on your desk your desktop and and little things like you know tapping around with your finger as opposed to a mouse okay well let's just take this for granted while it starts up that's going to work because my code always works right and go to questions <laughs> hi can you post again the codes so that people can 
take a look at the code while we're answering questions in the background? Sure. Yeah, where am I? Well, this is at least the green activity. I think it's just taking a really long time. Yeah, it's it's it takes a long time to boot up. Okay, there's some well, code. We had a couple of couple of questions from people about the R dot ID and when that's created. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by created, but the it's created the first time. I, I guess if you mean by created, like it becomes something that uh, Android takes noto notice of and puts into the R file for you to use, mm -hmm. it gets created whenever your project is built. And I guess I guess uh, there's an implicit assumption here that um, what I'm doing in, in Eclipse is I have this under project, I have build automatically checked. So every time I change a resource and save it, Android, uh, the... The Android IDE thing rebuilds my project, and it will pick up any changes to resources and change that R file every time I save. Um, you can turn that off if your build is taking a long time. Uh, I work for a company called Brightkite for a service called Brightkite, um, which is sort of like a Twitter with location, and we had an Android app. And that thing was huge. It, it, there's a lot of stuff in there. And so the builds were kind of long sometimes. When I was on a machine with some low resources, I would often turn off that build automatically and sometimes forget, you know, when, when I added a new resource, why it wasn't working um, to use it, like reference it inside Java code. I needed to just go build the project. Um, so that's that's when it happens, when it, when it builds. Okay. Did the uh, emulator start up? Yep. Yes. There we go. Now clicking red goes back to... I mean, it looks like it goes back to the red activity, but it, what it really does is finish the green activity, which just pops it off the stack there and goes back to our red activity. So, questions? Other questions, yeah. So, um, you mentioned the app plus uh, can be used anywhere in your file. What would be the best place to put it? The best place to put it is where you need it um, to be defined. Um, like for this, I, I want this to be for our... To, to uniquely identify this particular button on line 14 to 15 in the green XML um, code. So I wanted to find it there um, because that's what it references. There are only weird reasons that you would need to define it somewhere else or, or do the first reference somewhere else when we get into some of the layout complexities in later modules, and you'll see the only reason I mentioned it there. In fact, I shouldn't have e shouldn't have even mentioned it. <laughs> Probably too too confusing at this point. But um, we'll, we'll get into the reasons why you'd want to define it somewhere else in in some later modules. We we've had a couple of requests to go over creating the new activity again. Okay, so I create that just like any other Java class through um, by right clicking on is one way to do it on your project and go down to new class because it's just a Java class. The only thing that made it a, an activity is that I extended in this super class area activity. So this would make a new activity in the default package because I clicked on the project instead of the package. But anyway, this this is the only this is what made it an activity. Um, does that make sense? So, I mean, my package structure here is just com.oreilly.android.flashlight, but if in a real application I would, you know, have a better package layout with something underneath, like uh, probably keeping activities separate, or either I want to, you know, separate them out, just like any other Java project, by, like, keeping activities in one, one package, or maybe doing it more, like, functionally. So I want to keep everything that has to do with the flashlight part of my app under flashlight, and everything that has to do with my contacts management part of the app because this is going to be a flashlight app with contacts contacts um, in it in a in a com .oreilly .android contact or something I don't know uh, so you can you can organize things a lot better but there's nothing special about them they're just Java classes does that does that answer the question I think so do we have any other do we have any questions from the audience I think one person wanted to ask a question just to understand that use of finish there, if I had done on click and gone through what I did over on the other button on click, I would actually have one activity on top of another activity on top of another activity. Is that right? 
Good question. And so I don't actually want a third or second version of the original main screen. I actually want to go back to the original. That's a good. So that's a great question. Yep, and that's, that's exactly the case. You would have another instance of the red flashlight activity. So there's a way to manage that. Um, you can. This is getting a little bit more advanced. I don't even know if we cover this in, in later later modules, but uh, you can set uh, a setting in the manifest about that activity, saying that. Uh, and actually, you can define it when you when you set up the intent too. I can't I can't type it right off the, the tip of my fingers here, but basically you're saying um, I want you to start up this activity. Let's say it's called red flashlight activity, and if you find it earlier in the stack, pop back to that location. So Tony, we are out of time. So um, I want to say thank you to everybody who came, and thanks to our online audience. And I know there was a ton of questions that we didn't get to, so we are going to have a forum uh, set up, and we'll have more time for questions next time as well. So we have five more classes. Uh, there's five more of these classes where we're going to learn some more interesting stuff than just making sort of a toy flashlight application. And we're going to be building a, a task manager application in later um, um, later uh modules of this class. Uh, we're going to start out by just in the uh, next week, next Tuesday, building a very simple form to enter a list of tasks into our task manager application and then just sort of displaying those as a simple bulleted list. So then you'll get an idea of how to take in user, user input um, through other means than just clicking. And uh, we'll have some interesting stuff to show there. And then we'll continue to build out that application and use a list component which is uh, a much better way of showing lists of data. And uh, we'll be able to then like check off different uh, tasks in our task manager in the list there. Um, so those are all um, nice, more interesting things to do with the uh, interface. We're going to learn about some more components and layouts. But then we're going to stop in module three and, and refactor what we've built so far so that Everything is in all the tasks that we've uh, entered into our application are no longer stored in memory. They're going to be stored inside of a local database, which is good for uh, when the phone has to be rebooted or go through a update to the application and things like that. And we'll learn how learn how to deal with the local database. And that's in week uh, week number four, counting this as week number one. And then we're going to get into the really interesting stuff, which is uh, looks a lot better and is uh, more satisfying to build. We're going to build a, uh, a way for the tasks that we're keeping track of in our task manager to uh, have a location associated with them. So we'll build a way for you to look up a location by address in the phone, map it on, the, uh, on, a, on an included map, and then, and then associate that uh, location with a specific task. And then we'll continue on with that location theme in the uh, final week of this set. and. Uh, get the location of the device so that we can match that with the location of any of the tasks that we're storing and see if maybe there isn't something that's uh, on our task list that's that's close by where we are right now that we want to check off and uh, that will get the device that will look into the location APIs of getting a GPS or Wi-Fi location of the device and also using that to uh, uh, programmatically um, compare against the uh, location that's stored on a task. So uh, those, those are some of the more exciting things that we have um, in store for you over the next coming weeks.